Hello students of class 9. I hope you are doing well. Uh, today I am here to discuss with you the third chapter of your geography that is the geography that is included in the Assam State Board curriculum. The name of the chapter is Atmosphere, Structure, Air Pressure and Wind System. The title pretty much tells you what we are going to study in this chapter. Basically we will try and understand the atmosphere its structure, what is air pressure and we shall also study the wind systems. So let us uh, begin with the, the lecture today. So this video is brought to you by Smart Learning. This is my YouTube channel. Um, encourage me by hitting the like uh, subscribe to my channel and share it among your friends so that students who are locked inside their homes in these difficult times may also be benefited. Now, first of all, what is atmosphere? Well, by definition, atmosphere is the ocean of air surrounding us. Now, as you know, all around us, there is a continuous blanket of air. This continuous blanket of air is known as atmosphere. The atmosphere starts from the surface of the earth. It starts from the surface of the earth and goes to a height of 10,000 kilometers. So between 10,000 kilometers and the surface of the earth, you have the atmosphere. Now, these are the uh, various layers of the atmosphere. From 0 to 10 kilometers on the surface, you have got the troposphere. When you move further up from 10 kilometers to 30 kilometers, the layer of atmosphere is known as stratosphere. So if you're traveling up and up, so from zero kilometer to 10 kilometer up as you go, the layer of the atmosphere is known as troposphere. If you go higher to an altitude between 10 to 30 kilometer, it is stratosphere. And if you still go higher to a height of between 30 and 50 kilometer, it is known as the mesosphere. Higher than that, it is known as the thermosphere and beyond that, it is known as the exosphere. So these are the various layers of the atmosphere. So I'm not going into the detail right now about this. This we can do at a later time. Today, let us look at how does the atmosphere help us? You see, the atmosphere helps us in many ways. Life would not have been possible on Earth if there was no atmosphere. The atmosphere provides gases that are essential for our living. You see, our atmosphere contains oxygen. This is, this is why life is possible on Earth. The movement of air from one place to another helps in removing the excessive dry conditions. Suppose it is too dry currently in our area, then due to the movement of air, uh, air brings in moisture and the dryness is removed. Uh, rainfall is caused due to atmosphere. So you see, these are the ways in which the atmosphere helps us. Now, if you look at the structure of the atmosphere, in simple terms, atmosphere is composed of gases. It is composed of water vapor and dust particles. This together make up the atmosphere. So this is the table that I have uh, borrowed from your book, your textbook, and uh, it tells you the gases that are present, what gas is present in what amount it is there. It is present in your book. I've taken it from there. So from this table, it is clear that nitrogen is the most abundant gas in the atmosphere. So this is the gas that is most abundant. 78% of our atmosphere's gas composition is made up of nitrogen. Argon is less than 1%. Argon is this is this gas is used in bulbs and welding and other requirements this gas is produced is present less than one percent in our atmosphere oxygen very important gas this is the gas that we breathe in oxygen is present uh, to about 20 percent uh, of the of the atmospheric gaseous composition is oxygen so 20 percent oxygen 78 percent nitrogen carbon dioxide is present uh, to an extent of 0.036%, very less. But this carbon dioxide is very useful for us. At the same time, it is also very harmful for us. 
You see, carbon dioxide is a gas that traps the heat of the sun. Now, that is very important for sustaining life on Earth. If the, there was no way to keep the heat of the sun trapped, then when the sun would go down in nightfall, our temperature, our earth would have frozen away completely. Or when there is there was less sunlight, the earth would have frozen completely. But carbon dioxide helps in keeping the heat trapped on the earth and helps sustain life. But there is a harmful side of carbon dioxide as well. As you know, we speak about global warming these days. If the amount of carbon dioxide increases, then the heat trapped inside the atmosphere also increases. This leads to global warming. Ozone gas is another very important gas. Uh, ozone gas is present 40 to 50 kilometer above us. Now, what is the very important role that ozone gas plays is that it protects us from the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun. You see, when the sun's rays come to the earth, it not only brings us light, it not only brings us heat, it also brings with it very harmful ultraviolet rays. If this rays would have come directly to the earth, we would have developed various kind of uh, diseases. So ozone layer, which is present over the earth, acts as a sunscreen. Many of you use sunscreen, is it not? To protect your skin from the harmful effects of the sun. Ozone is our natural, is the natural sunscreen of the earth. It is a natural umbrella that protects the earth from the harmful radiations of the sun. So now let us look at atmospheric pressure and how to measure atmospheric pressure. From here on, we are getting into the details of the chapter and atmospheric pressure is the first point that I shall discuss in detail today. The other parts of this chapter I shall discuss in successive lectures. Now what is atmospheric pressure really? First of all, let us understand what is pressure. Pressure is defined as you can see on the screen as a force acting per unit area. That is called pressure. Alright, so anything when it exerts force, the force acting per unit area, say for per per centimeter or per kilometer, the force acting per point of the of any surface is called pressure. Atmospheric pressure is the force exerted per unit area by the air, right? Atmospheric pressure is the force exerted by air per unit area that is on every point of the earth. Now, this is an animated uh, GIF that I have used here for you to understand how air exerts pressure. You see, when you blow air inside a balloon, the balloon inflates. But if you blow it to uh, more than it can hold, then the pressure inside the balloon caused due to the air, the pressure that the air exerts on the walls of the balloon will burst the balloon, will explode the balloon. So, few things to remember about air pressure. Remember, air moves from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. More on this in the later part of the lecture. You have to remember here that air pressure is me measured with an instrument. And you can see its picture here. The name of the instrument is barometer. So, the normal air pressure at sea level now look at this barometer you can see there is 760 millimeter written here it means 76 uh, centimeters this height of mercury in a mercury column of the barometer is taken this height 76 centimeter or 760 millimeter this height is taken as the sea level height now the normal air pressure at 15 degrees celsius you see pressure increases with temperature so, at 15 degrees Celsius, the normal pressure that air exerts is 1013.2 millibar. This is the normal atmospheric pressure. And this pressure, how it does it happen? You see this barometer, you can see the picture here. 
this is the mercury tub of the barometer so when air exerts a pressure on this tub and consequently the uh, level rises or falls in this column now at this height this height will give you the reading of uh, atmospheric pressure at 15 degrees celsius 1013.2 millibar at normal sea level is the normal average normal air pressure so what you have to remember from this discussion is that the name of the instrument used to measure air pressure is known as barometer and the unit used to measure air pressure is millibar right so let us proceed now does air pressure change yes air pressure changes a lot atmospheric pressure changes a lot it changes from place to place due to a number of reasons remember the cold air contains more water vapor so cold air is heavy so when there is cold air over place heavy air cold air moves downward so if it is moving downward it puts more pressure so wherever there is cold air the pressure will be more so if you go to the poles you will find that the atmospheric pressure at the poles is very high why the air in that region is cold it is moist it is cold and so it is heavy cold air heavy air moves downward so you can understand when weight comes downward there will be more pressure similarly at the equator air pressure is very low why at the equator the hot air is light and hot air moves up the hot air since the hot air moves up there is less pressure on in the equatorial region now seasonal changes also can bring about atmospheric pressure changes as i told you if there is more water vapor the air will be more moist and the air will be heavy heavy air will provide more air pressure so if compared to a very dry day a rainy day will have more atmospheric pressure a dry day the on a dry day the air will be dry if the air is dry air will be light and there will be less pressure so what did we learn here we have seen that cold air or moist air is heavy heavy air moves downwards wherever there is cold air atmospheric pressure will be more that is why air pressure is more at the poles wherever there will be hot air the air will be dry the air will be light so the air will move up hot air moves up so the atmospheric pressure at hot places will be low and seasonal changes bring about changes in the atmospheric pressure so let us just revise what we have learned today we have learned the de definition of atmosphere we have learned the definition of atmospheric pressure we have learned the name of the instrument for measuring atmospheric uh, for measuring air pressure we have learned the name of the unit for measuring air pressure we have also learned about the reasons that can cause atmospheric pressure to change so this is these are the things that we have learned together we have also learned about the gases which gases pre present in the most abundant quantity in the atmosphere do you know the answer do you remember it yes nitrogen is the gas that is present in the most abundant quantity in the atmosphere and ozone is the name of the gas that acts as a protective umbrella this much for today's discussion i hope you have understood the discussion so far i hope you have learned a little in our successive lectures i'll take you through the rest of the chapter what do you think is it a little easy now to understand the chapter okay if it is easy please hit the like button so that i know please hit the subscribe and like button so i know that uh, you are being benefited by these video lectures your likes your subscriptions will encourage me to make more videos thank you very much